Tuesday night. It is eight o'clock. It is time for the DD round table. And you know what that, you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at, and I'm here with you. Yes, it is a wonderful Tuesday night, and we are live here on Twitch. And we are also going to you're going to record it and put it on to YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please click that like button, subscribe, follow, and comment down below. But also, don't forget everyone else here has a YouTube channel. So make sure you go to their YouTube channels. All the links are down below. So you can go right to their channels and click on like, follow, and subscribe to all of them. And then we have our return of DJ Cool Thing, Hunter. He has come uh, for a show tonight. Uh, he, yeah, we, he was working with right that. He will be in and out every so often. But it's good to have him back here on our show tonight. Uh, DJ Brentley, he should be here hopefully soon. He has a car show. Um, and he uh, probably a couple blocks away from his house. So he'll be joining us in a little while. And then again, of course, I'm also honored to have some great other DJs here. Matt DJ Salsas, Jeff Johnson as well, as well as Dwayne Dixon uh, from Ohio, as well as North Carolina uh, covered. And cool thing from South Carolina. And Callie, of course, me here in Chicago in the middle. Uh, I got to thank you guys all for coming in tonight. Hopefully you guys are enjoying yourself, having a nice, busy summer. Uh, you know, it's been busy, busy, busy for a lot of us. And hopefully you're enjoying also some barbecue with friends and family and got a chance to relax and uh, have some uh, fun time as well as some time to relax and decompress from doing all the work. And with your regular full-time jobs, hopefully – uh, maybe take some a break from there and maybe go on a trip or something. So I got asked DJ cool things, speaking of trips and not being here for a little bit. I know a cool thing has been working is rearing off, uh, working at the uh, hot dog stand and doing some car shows and some other stuff, which is just great. So DJ cool thing. Welcome back. Good to see you, brother. It's great. And it's great. it's great to be back after a long mental break before I drive myself crazy. Cause well, I was about to. Well, hopefully, don't drive yourself crazy tonight. But you know, I know, I know you've been busy and stuff like that. You know, you and I yeah, chat all the time and Insta. Yeah, yeah and yeah, uh, been, what, you want to fill the people in what's going on? Oh yeah. Um. Well, since since my last appearance here on the show, I have been dealing a lot with the ten year high school reunion, which ended up being canceled due to lack of interest. Whether it's the tickets being way too expensive or not being, you know, not have enough followers on our our private uh, Facebook group just for the reunion, and not being, you know, no, no, you know, wanting or nobody knowing that we're having a reunion, and so we they decided to cancel it. And I worked so hard on the playlist; I've been practicing day in day out, and I got a wedding planned for twenty twenty four for a friend of mine who goes to to my church and her daughter's in my class because I am a first through fifth grade teacher at my church. So I got that gig coming up. I got a anniversary party for my aunt and my uncle. They're celebrating 40 years of being married. And of course, mixed in on with that same party, a military retirement party, which is going to be awesome. And me and my family might have our family's end of summer party. So I got some really cool gigs coming up. And I, my my DJ setup is going through a big transformation. I just purchased a Rockville Rock booth from Amazon, which will be coming tomorrow or sometime during the week. Because you know how Amazon is, like they like to be late. I purchased the sound switch to go with my Mixstream Pro, which I am moving away from laptop DJing because of what's happening with Serato and Rekordbox. You know, what no better time than ever to move over to Inch and DJ and just DJ with my external hard drive, plug into my Mixstream Pro, use the sound switch with my Watchbox 2s, and just really create that mobile friendly setup. And that's that's that is um oh, my phone's going off here, so turn that off. Uh, you know that's 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 the fun stuff. Buying new gear, it's always fun. And then 
uh, switching from uh, not doing sound switch to sound switch. That should be very interesting because you get to have some cool shows. You get to program some stuff. And a lot of people who use sound switch uh, do love it. Um, I don't, anyone else here? I, I know Matt doesn't use sound switch, but uh, Jeff or Dwayne, do you either one of you guys use sound switch or? Yeah, um, I was the one that had the um the control, the sound switch. I eventually got that. So I started off with that little, I started off with when, you know, the dongle, and then mm -hmm. I eventually got the the little box, and then I eventually got the controller. The little, what is you it, want control the LCD one? screen on it, you can actually program and do stuff? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I see a few people have that, and they, they really do enjoy that. I know it works with um, uh, Engine, yeah. I also know it works really well with Serato, too. I don't know whether it works well with Rekordbox or Virtual DJ. Um, so that yeah, would be, I'm, using, be I'm, I'm using yeah, I'm using this one because the USB port or yeah, the USB plug goes right into the mixing pro that goes into my light, and I can link up as many lights as I want to create a sound active show with the mixing pro. Oh, yeah, just run a DMX cable from one to the other and just chain them. Or mm -hmm. if you want to get really crazy, you could buy a couple of dog uh, those digital doggles and just plug in one each one and run wirelessly. Yeah, so you can do that too, plug it into the the DMX port right there, and leave I'll it on your table, put the receivers on each one of the lights. Now I'll think about that the next year or so, whenever well, the time does. Oh, yeah, you get you got plenty of time. If you, if you do that before the wedding, even easier, you know? Yeah. So um, I, I sent a video to you guys, um, great video on YouTube, and I'm going to put a link down below for it from another DJ who uh, he built his own uh, DJ booth and table. And he was doing his laptop, where he put his laptop stand, drilled a hole in the top of it, put a laptop stand in the top of his uh, table and stuff like that. Um, and he's kind of, he did his own thing. He built his own DJ uh, table. Um, and he has some great looking stuff and great looking equipment. And he's uh, someone who uh, is... Uh, I, I, I see he has a lot of lot of D, uh, DIY uh, gear for uh, building this table and stuff for uh, DJing. And the cool thing about he was walking through everything he does and everything he's done to the table to set everything up to do this. And we were talking a little bit back and forth. And DJ furniture has become more and more popular as we see, uh, either be it the bun booth, be it uh, uh uh, Max, be it whomever it is, even um, like Revo Spin, they have their uh, all LED uh, booth. Basically, has you know three sided LED panels. Basically, a video on all three sides. Um, and then you know you have someone like uh, what uh, DJ Brentley got. He got the uh, Toadmatic booth, which has the big, I think fifty five inch or sixty five inch uh, screen TV in there. It's on casters. It rolls back and forth. So that's DJ furniture. Why well, want to know from you guys? Are you guys looking at that? Are you guys thinking about that? Do you want to be uh, kind of like that DJ who has that beautiful little set out front, like DJ Rachel does? She I, she has a max booth. She goes out front, has that little setup, and then behind them, like on a table behind a facade, having your support equipment behind you, and it's just you, the table. And your controller and a laptop, or do you have you want to still have your normal setup with everything on your table right next to you, or do you want to do something more portable, something a, a, a rolling uh, DJ booth? And I know Hunter; he's got a DJ booth he's going to have from uh, Rockville delivered. And again, that's 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 furniture. He's got he's got new furniture. He's getting rid of the normal four foot six foot eight foot table that we all have but that I've, yeah that i've used for four years since 2019 and so he's upgrading a, yeah. and he's upgrading to the booth are Dwayne or jeff or uh, matt are you looking at to do that for upgrading to a, a booth who wants to go first yeah what i can do? go first because i have i think i got the same one that hunter's gonna get it's like if it's, it's in the case and the only thing you have to do is just open it up yeah. Metal. Yeah, I, yeah, I love it because it's light and I can get in. It only takes a moment to do it. And then I bought a shelf where I can put my laptop on, so I don't need like um one of those laptop doohickey things anymore. So I love it. And I got the it comes in black, and I can change it out for a white scrim if I want to put lights behind it. 
So I like it because it's small. I, as far as the like the bun booth, those things look heavy. And I still don't have like a big enough vehicle to carry all that and the speakers and stuff. Yeah. That's that's the thing. Space is always, uh, you know, if you don't have a, I, I, I'm, good. I'm blessed to have a van. Uh, so I have a lot of room. And I know, Jeff, you and I had the same table um, that, uh, you know, we, that we use when we put the TV in front and uh, have that. Uh, and you can, you had that great hack that you told us about to get the bracket from uh, from Amazon to replace the bracket that comes with it. Um, but are you looking to upgrade your booth to next generation booth, get like a bun booth or like a uh, max booth or anything? What's going on? Uh, or are you uh, you're going to stick with your booth you have now that you that you know you and I both have that we like? I'm going to stick with mine for a while. I mean, it works great for me. Uh, I've got a 55 inch display. It all collapses down to uh, two bags uh, that are you know this thick. Um, so you know I've got a suburban, and my my uh, basic setup is whatever will fit in the suburban. Uh, now the bun booth does come apart and into two packages or two uh, carry cases, um, so that might be an option. But uh, I still am you know preferring to have a display because um, my niche is playing music videos, and until that wears itself out, you know, uh, I will continue uh, playing music videos on a 55 inch display. Um, that just separates me from the competition uh, in this region, in this area. So I will continue doing that. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, it, it, some of the new furniture looks enticing. Uh, it just looks good to have, have uh, like what DJ Rachel uses, uh, Joe Bunn, uh, Rick Webb built his own, uh, but it comes, he puts it in a flight case that's the size of basically a Volkswagen. So, I mean, but he, he carries, you know, he's pulling a trailer. Uh, he can afford to do that. Um, I'm not looking to pull a trailer. You know, like I said, what I can fit in my Suburban is what I will use. And I, 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 I don't blame you. You know, I think your Suburban is probably just as high as my Sprinter for lift-in. Uh, I know DJ Brentley, he, he's got the, like we, you were, ta we were talking before, Eric Brentley, uh, other than Huntley, Hunter, Hunter, eh, I talk right, Hunter coming back to the show tonight uh, from a little hiatus. Uh, we're talking DJ Furniture, and I know I talked about you got the uh, the Toad booth. Uh, we're talking a little bit about the Dandy Max booth and about the, uh, uh, the Bun booth. And uh, there's a, a video of a DJ uh, that I follow on YouTube. He built his own basically booth uh, top, and he was putting um, – he made a hole put for his holder for his uh, laptop, and he was walking through how you how he built this this uh, this case for his la for his uh, controller and everything like that. How he has everything laid out right there, beautiful job. I I, I, I gotta give him top notch for everything laid out. It makes me want to go and grab my case, my Odyssey case, open it up, and go. Okay, I want to do some of the things he's doing. He's got some cool stuff in there, and I know that you have. Um, the great thing that you have, you have the tow booth, which is not cheap. You know, you're talking, you know, the five, six, seven grand area, not a cheap thing. But you have that with 55 or 65 inch TV. And like myself, you have a van, you have a Ford van, I have a Mercedes Sprinter. It's a little bigger. But, and then Jeff's got a Suburban, but you have something like cool thing that has a smaller SUV or Dwayne has a smaller SUV. Matt's got a trailer and he's got a, a Tahoe. But the thing is that, do you feel that that booth, the furniture, uh, DJ furniture, uh, the booths, do you think that's a much better thing you have now than what you had six months ago or a year ago for your, your style and look for your DJ setup? I'm not sure, really. I mean, because I had a few different facades already and different setups, so I was versatile in the fact that I, you want an all-white setup and you have me on the floor? Cool. I have a front board that has plexi in it. So if you spill on it, I just have to paint it and clean it. If you have me up and away from people, I have another dragon front board, which has uh, spandex in it. So, or the lycra, whatever that material is. So if I'm up and away from people, I'll use that one. So I'm not worried about getting spilled on. But the toad, yeah, I think part and parcel, because there's not many people in, the mar in my market with the TV booth, it's an extra selling point and an upsell. And having the space to haul it around in was the biggest consideration I had to make. 
it fits in my minivan with a lot of work. It wasn't the easiest thing to do, but it will roll into my minivan. But then that limits me to what accoutrement I can bring with it. In a perfect world, I use my van, and that was the weekend we found out how much gear I can put in my minivan was when the serpentine belt on my van went. And, I mean, yeah, it was a tight squeeze if it everything I wanted in there, and I had to ditch my totems and movers, but it still worked. With a van, it might, you know, having the space, the only other furniture piece I've thought of is one of the Danny Max consoles. And part and parcel, I like it, but it also, in the same stroke, and maybe part of this DJing and weddings is about us, but it makes it feel like you're putting me just right in front of everybody, no booth, no nothing. I'm kind of showing off at that point, and it almost doesn't feel like me. But at the same time, I really like that super sleek white look with the light up. That's just all. It really has a specific kind of flair feel to it. But you need the totems to go along with it to match. So that's the other half that you have to think about. The toad I just dumped with everything all in, including putting a deck in there, just under 10K. So at that point, do I need any new gear? No, absolutely not. Do I want new gear? Probably. <laughs> Shut and that's, that's that's one of the considerations you have to look at for furniture. I know again, Jeff and I have the same uh the same booth. Um and I know the uh the Rockville booth is very similar to our booths. Uh Jeff and I both do TVs in the front of our booths. Um uh for uh, depending on what package people pick with me and Jeff does with certain packages with the TV in front. And again, it separate does separate us from a lot of DJs having that TV out there. I feel, you know, it's kind of like old school MTV kind of feel to it. Because especially you get people that haven't seen the, the video in a long time. They're like, wait, there's a video to this? They're dancing. They're, they stop dancing. They're kind of watching. I, I see that I, I see that when I do that. Uh, a couple, in my uh, TV booth, though, I will say this. If I'm feeling super lazy now and I just want to roll in, pull a couple wires out and go, even if they haven't paid for that package but I am feeling that super lazy, I'm just going to roll it in. It saves me 30 minutes, 40 minutes of setup time right off the gate. You know, right there, so that's, that's huge. Yeah. That's huge. Uh, no, I, I talked to um I I talked to Revo Spin about their booth, the the LED panel booth, uh, because it was here uh in Chicago and they had that uh they had a special when he had at Marquee. Uh and the marquee price did not include the case for it and did not include the casters option for it as well which they have a caster option and they have a case for it which the casters you could permanently install uh, install the casters on it and use it like the tow booth and roll roll in and so forth so on so i think that's pretty cool some comments here very quickly dj adrian e welcome 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 sir and he said uh uh hello gents and table baby table plus tabletop facade he is all about the table that is not a bad thing uh then we have uh DJ Fred, the godson, he said, great idea for topic. Uh, we got, uh, what's up, guys? And we got a uh, problem with all of these is the money, $2,500 above for the booth. And he said, 10K, wow. So, Matt, mm -hmm. we're going to go to you. DJ Furniture, I know you got some really cool displays and stuff and facades. What do you think you know, of it? I would never, I'd never invest in that silly stuff. Um I don't like how it looks. I don't think it's it adds anything. It's not going to get you more money. Um, I mean, it's it's. I think if anything, the the hoover board or hoover board, whatever, actually looks kind of cool. But the problem with these is, a they're meant for the big mixers. You could get them for a smaller one, but I don't want people seeing all my wires. I don't. I can't just run a controller. Okay, so like. You know, I have lighting, I have a laptop, I have an external mixer. It's a lot to put on something like that. So I would consider something like what Travis has from Elite Enter Entertainment, whatever. But like, I, I don't know. I, th I think my, my setup is, is gorgeous with a facade. So I don't really feel the need for it. Um, I also like that I like bringing less to a venue. So I don't even bring a table anymore. I have table leg risers. I just use whatever six foot table the, the venue has. There's always a tablecloth on it. I just throw my facade in front of it and I'm good to go. So, and I could just hide all the wires behind the facade. Nobody sees it. I don't, my other thing is yeah. I, yeah. I don't want to stand on something. So like with Rick's setup, 
it goes out the bottom on the side, which is nice. But like a lot of these other tower booths, you have to go directly from the center. And for me, I can't have, I can't stand anything by where my feet are, even if it, there's a mat over it, like I'm still going to feel that elevation and it bothers me. So um, I would consider like something like what, what Travis has, where it's more just kind of, or even like the toad where it's, it's more a booth with just a little lip kind of hiding everything. Uh, Cause the TV's nice. I think a monogram on there, I wouldn't never play music videos, but I think a monogram is a nice touch. Um, I, I don't. I just, there's nobody in our market that has a TV booth that I've seen, which is crazy because this is Orange County in LA. Uh, I only know one guy that has a Max booth, uh, but he got the ridiculously fat one that I think looks kind of (laughs) silly, which looks almost the same as a table. Um, And I think, yeah, there's one guy that's got the bun booth, uh, but he doesn't, he's, he has the bun booth and the Asteras, but he's, he only DJs at a couple venues and isn't really, uh, so really. So one of the things, Matt, um, I know Travis, I I, guess I have talked to him plenty of times, great guy, another great YouTuber to go uh, watch. Um, he hand-built those booths. This is his second booth he's hand-built, and you know, put a TV in and stuff, and he's done some tricks, like he put uh, XLR ports on each side, so he has to basically just run the cable right to each one of those XLR ports right on the bottom of the booth, which is really nice. And then he has an outlet next to the XLR booth. So he did use a really short IEC cable from the speaker to there. And it's one piece of tape to hold it down. Boom, done and over with. His setup is really, really quick. Uh, a couple of things people are asking questions in the chat. Uh, Solstice, the thing, uh, oh, wait, in general, this is from Adrian E. Let's start with this one. Um, in general, how long does it take for everyone to set up in a pinch? We'll answer that question in a minute. Um, they're also saying build your own booth is cheaper. Um, Solstice, Matt, the thing is mm-hmm. that the furniture is all, let's see, uh, is that the furniture, all the mixer, controller mics are all built in. So you save a lot of time at set and breakdown because all the cables, everything's all set up in there. You yeah, basically I mean, put it on run, there, if, boom, and connect cables, you're done. If you uh, run the you same setup every event, sure, those work. I don't do that though. I, I have multiple systems and Sometimes I go through a crossover. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I use one external mixer. Sometimes I use a different. Sometimes my lighting guy is off to the side with the laptop running lights. So sometimes he's right next to me. So I, I get it. Um, I just, I don't know. I, it's, it's, it's cool. But then again, yeah, the same thing of like space. I don't want to mm-hmm. have to bring a trailer to every single event. And I don't have to with my, my main setup. If, it's, if I'm bringing two subs or the big subs, then yeah, I'll bring a trailer. But then again, that goes to... I don't want to have to pre-wire everything if I have to take it out another time. So yeah, if you're doing different my, different sets, different had, kind of looks versus multiple, one, multiple mixers and like double of the same to where I could keep everything in one, great. But uh, I don't know. It's it, it is. I I can set up quick enough by myself. Like, well, how long did, how long did it take you usually to set up from start to beginning? If you're just country and set up. If if like with or without lights, because it's the lights that take a while. Without lights, like. From the moment I get into the venue to like finished with audio, 20 minutes. Um, if it's two subs, two speakers, or one sub and, and two speakers, two subs, two speakers takes a little longer because I got to run cables more, but like 30 minutes max for sound. Um, the thing that takes the longest is the lighting and bringing everything in. And I, I bring everything in in two trips. You know, I bring everything on one cart and then I come back and then I bring my speakers uh, with the speaker poles on top and whatever their long stuff that needs to go long ways to get into the venue. So two trips plus a trip for a subwoofer or two, three trips. So, but like so, the, that big setup with all those poles and the facade and the dual dual 21s and the NXLs and the custom neon sign and ceremony that took like almost three hours with two people. So it, it's, it takes a while. It's, it's the clamps like screwing in and unscrewing clamps takes forever. So it doesn't matter what kind of clamp you have. Quick release, they're not actually quick release. It's the screwing it onto the actual light that takes forever. Uh, centering everything, measuring it to make sure it's the exact height, all that stuff. It's, and those tubes, like screwing in an onstage speaker uh, mic stand takes forever. It seems like it never ends. And then centering them and leveling them. It's, all that little things take forever. So like just audio, two speakers, subwoofer, two speaker stands, some cables, done, easy. But, but doing the lights take more time, so... I always arrive like three hours early, so uh, 
usually no more than two hours to set up and then I have a half hour to change and grab something to eat if I want and then start music when guests start arriving and it doesn't ever take me more than like an hour to clean up even the big setup was like hour and 15 at the most so so Jeff I know uh, wherever you can fit in your suburban that's what you take but I know you get some good setups some wonderful setups uh how long on average does it take you to set up for an event and how long does it take you to take down about the same as um as solstice it takes um about an hour to set up uh audio and lighting in a pinch i could set up audio and get music playing in 25 minutes probably um but yeah standard setup it's about 30 minutes to get uh, you know the um the booth set up speakers and then lighting my lighting is becoming a little bit more simplified um I'm doing more uplighting, which is all battery and um, and you know all remote DMX. Um, so that is you know you just power them up and drop them. You know it's so cool, it's so quick and easy. Uh, yeah, no that sounds like, yeah, that kind of sounds like what I'm doing with the Watchfix too. Is make it simple, easy to use, yeah, and easy to set up, easy to take down. Because before I was using a, like a pair of eight. Rock Park 50s, I had to plug in, like daisy chain the power cables, and it's just it was just a mess. Yeah, so it, it is, you know, for, for a large setup, if I'm doing a, um, you know, uh, high school prom or uh, homecoming dance, yeah, there's multiple subs. It's a little bit more, uh, it fills up the Suburban, you know, and it takes, you know, average about an hour and a half, you know, for a full setup. And then, you know, I always arrive two to three hours, like, like Solstice said, before an event. You know, you get plenty of time to set up, you know, inevitably something will not communicate with something else, you know, in a big setup. So you want uh, uh, time to, uh, you know, check where that's going wrong and, you know, reboot, whatever. Um, but yeah, an hour and a half max. Tear down. Uh, in my contract, I have, uh, you know, in every contract, I have a minimum of two hours prior to event and one hour uh, after the event for teardown. Um, so yeah, two hours set up, one hour to tear down. And uh, even with a big setup, I'm usually out in an hour, hour 10. So I got to tell you guys this one that happened to Tracy and I, because I'm, I'm blessed I have Tracy, who also not only coordinates, and but also does set up with me and tear down. We had a uh, wedding at uh, a venue and uh, we only had a half hour to break down from the time the wedding ended to the time we had to be out of the building. So the wedding, the wedding ended at 1030. We had to be out of the building by 11. We were actually in our van driving out onto the road at 1059. And we didn't have to be off the property. We just had to be out of the, out of the, the building. We were driving out onto uh, Archer Avenue. Uh, at 10 59 at night so it was one of the things that we didn't put a really elaborate setup it was just you know two j8s uh and matt's favorite light the uh gig bar <laughs> uh we didn't do any uplighting or anything like that they didn't want to do anything elaborate uh but uh going back to the uplighting with you jeff i know you had the booth lighting right you had the booth lights um how are you yeah, like them? how are they working for you uh, fine. You know, uh, they, the new ones, uh, have the, you know, assignable DMX, which is great. Um, the, uh, I also have eight of the old ones, which were all just, you know, basically stuck on channel one, uh, and channel, uh, for the, um, for the wireless DMX, I think it was only, uh, the green channel or which, whichever the first one is. I can't remember if it's green or red. Uh, so you couldn't change either of those. Um, but they were great. I mean, I never had a problem with them, uh, with the new ones. Yes. I can assign those, uh, to a different channel. Um, but I end up putting them on the exact same channel as the old ones. Um, just so they're all, you know, doing the same thing. Uh, I, I, I love them. I think they're great. Uh, they're only four, um, what are they? 12 watt, I think, uh, each, uh, LED, uh, so they're not quite as bright as my six by 18s or my nine by 18s, but those are so big and heavy, you know, my nine by 18s are, are just, I mean, you know, they're almost the size of a basketball. I mean, you know, they're just enormous in a, in a case where I can fit 16 of the both, uh, lighting, uh, the four buys, I can only get four of the nine by 18s in there. Now, granted, they are a lot brighter, but for up lighting, what do you need? You know, if it's just hitting a spot on a wall, 
you know, yeah, those four buys are plenty. That's all you need. And the more, the better, you know, the, the more you can put in a room, uh, every corner, every, you know, in between area, the more you can hit and the more you can light with those, it just looks better than just four bright ones. You know, I mean, four bright ones, it doesn't have the same effect. So I'm loving them. I, I've got no problem with them. I bought them direct from China. Did uh, did not go through uh, uh, Rick Webb. Sorry, Rick. Uh, but the price was much Hello. better. It got to me in five days. So Hello. yeah, there's um I I have a um I have a link for that uh, from them directly in China, um, which I'm going to put down below in the uh, in the chat for uh, YouTube. So if you're watching this, you want to go direct to China and and bypass. Now Rick Rick does give a warranty versus buying from China. It is what it is, but it is cheaper. But there's no warranty. Rick is giving a warranty. He is giving, you know, per, he is giving some protection. So that's what you had to decide as a business owner. Do you go with Rick Webb, which again, he's got a business, he's selling it. And if something happens, you have some recourse for China. Yeah. Um, it, that would be very difficult. Uh, a couple of things here. We got uh, a little bit more chat in here. Um, the, the booth IR4 are great. Uplighting technology has come a long way for less. LL, sorry, Rick. Ha ha ha. Uh, not sure why someone would go through him when you can buy him online from China Direct. China has a warranty to one year. Uh, but the one thing with the warranty in China, you, they, they may want you to ship it back. They don't have a California warehouse. There, it's, it's it's like an iffy area versus he's giving a guarantee. That's again, it, it's it's like anything with light. China. Uh, speaking of China, I know Matt buys a lot of lights from China, and he does deal with different manufacturers have. Uh, they, they will take stuff back because they have stuff in California and swap it out. Um, so he knows a couple of manufacturers that will do that. Dwayne, on you for uh, what you're doing. Um, are you? What, what, how long does it take you for setup and teardown? What's if your it's time a, to If it's a pinch, I have done it like in thirty to forty five minutes because I have that that rock build thing, that rock build mm -hmm. DJ booth. So I just fold up, plop it down. But as far as putting music on, getting music going, yeah, it's about 10, 15 minutes because I can just Bluetooth my phone while I'm still setting up with my column array speakers. So everything is compact. So I can do it if I had to really rush with a small setup that's with a small controller as opposed to my big X, um, X, X, SX2 controller, I could do it in about 30, 45 minutes. And, but then I got also pre, also like pre set up before I take it. So I know exactly what cores to bring. And then I just bring a couple of extras. So everything is in the tub. So it's just plop, plop, plop and ready to go. Tub, tubs are your friend. If you guys don't have tubs, go oh, to yeah. your nurse home prime improvement store. Just like that. Figure oh, out yeah. tubs for you. Cause tubs Wait, I found those at Sam, I found these at Sam's Club. Sam's Club, home de home improvement store, be it Home Depot, Menards, Costco. whatever. Tubs are your friend. <laughs> I can't use those tubs. I I tried for maybe a season and went through a dozen of them. And oh. At that point, I'm like, if I busted this many, I might as well go and buy the Gator Tates mm -hmm. or a Pelican. And Why are you dropping off the to say, <laughs> Well, the number of gigs I'm taking, it's three in the morning. I'm now, you know getting home from like the other night Madison or something. I'm not being as careful as I should be. I'm half asleep at this point after four gigs in a row. There things are getting tossed around into the car. The night we hit a deer, a bunch of things in my car got busted that of my own gear. So yeah, Wisconsin, you know, gear deer central once we get around, you know, late October until hunting season really picks up. But yeah, those cases have failed me left and right. So now I just use hard shells. See, I, Tracy and I, we have a bunch of cases, and I, I can't remember what brand she has. They are black and yellow. They're pretty. They're pretty robust. And when we find stuff, is if it, if we see something with a crack, we replace it. They're you know they're not outrageously expensive. They're not outrageously cheap. You know they're like I, I want to say like sixteen to twenty dollars a case for the ones that we get. Uh, so they're not the most expensive, not the cheapest, but it's just nice for organizing, especially cables. You can wrap them up and use a. Uh, your Velcro ties or uh, cable cuffs of your see them they're plastic. They have a they're red and black. And they look like handcuffs, but for cables, and they they lock into place. So there's there's a couple things there you can use. Uh, but 
yeah, uh, I know three of us use line arrays. Um, and we can usually line arrays are usually pretty quick for setup, either Maui's or J8s or uh, the uh, 28s or the uh, when you got with the Harbinger right, uh, line yeah, arrays, right? MSL, yeah, MSL, I think it's 1000. Yeah, those are usually pretty quick for setup. And Jeff, you said uh, how long did it take you to set up your uh, your Maui's? Uh, three minutes, two, three minutes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. just basically drop the sub and um, and pop the two on top, run the cable. I mean, yeah, it's, you know, it's super easy. The, yeah. By the way, they're column arrays, as Solstice has, uh, has uh, let you know a few times. Yeah, they're not line arrays. <laughs> they're not line arrays. <laughs> line arrays hang from the ceiling. And they're, they're at, their factors call them line arrays, Dave. You go to their, their marketing stuff, they say line arrays. Compact line compact. array, sure. Compact, compact. line array. You can call yeah. that. I, it's what they call it, you know, just like you I, know, have, I have what they call a big boy line array or a big boy column. Well, line yeah, array. You, you, you always got to go big, just like this. You know, this is Kleenex. This is Kleenex. <laughs> Doesn't matter what yeah, brand it is, it it's Kleenex. Kleenex. <laughs> They're tissues. They're Kleenex. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool thing. How long does it take you to set up and tear down on usually on a gig? What's going on, Jim? Well, I don't really keep track, but if I had a guess, you like, I know, I know it's less than an hour because, like, 20, 30 minutes or so because I still have that table. So, if you yeah, had to go in, if you had, if you guys had to go into a room, and again, Tracy, and I just ran into this, uh, not just past weekend, but the weekend before that, this is the gig that we had be out in a half hour. We only had, like a half hour, 45 minutes to set up. We were set up, ready to do music in probably 20 minutes because my case with my SX2 has, I have a, uh, my Sennheiser microphone in there. I have my handheld microphone. Everything's pre-wired. Only thing I'm running out of there is two XLR cables to the speakers and my power cable because I have uh, the Furman uh, power strip in there. And running a power cable out of that, and then folding underneath the uh, the case and, and drawing it back. So yeah, it's one of the things that. that it, yeah, I think I do quick. that. I think I do that with Mixstream Pro. I mean, no laptop, which means no extra cables. I just plug and play, and I'm ready to go. Once I turn that thing on, because it doesn't take long at all to actually boot up. No, it. it well, even a lap, even, with, even with a laptop, for the rest of us who are still using laptops. Laptops will take long to to boot up, <laughs> but you 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 can get music running in about twenty minutes then, right? With the mix stream and set a couple, not setting lights up, just your couple speakers and yeah. your uh, your controller, right? Yeah, about 10, 20 minutes or so. So there you go. When doing... car show, yeah, when I did that car show, I was up and running in no time, and I had to put up a ten by ten uh, tent, which actually worked very well. There you go. Always protect yourself. So that kind yeah. of gives you an idea. Oh, you know what? DJ Brantley, I didn't ask you. How long does this take you to set up? And I know there's some great pictures of you I see on Facebook with the cape behind you. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. The, <laughs> the Have you guys seen or not? On, on Facebook, there's him. He always takes a picture in front of his setup, which is cool. But sometimes when he's standing, when he's standing, it looks like the – one of the scrims looks like a cape. He looks like it's like Superman's cape flop in the back, a black cape. Like, mm -hmm. are you Batman? Are you like evil Superman? Are you like, you know, super DJ? But anyways, uh, how long uh, did it take you to set up uh, if you had to get set up in a pinch and take down? I actually, if I don't have loading to consider, because I found out exactly how long it takes me to set up my bit, my white setup a couple weeks ago, because the one you... The venue coordinator, it was her last week at the venue at Celebrations. And both brides and grooms had the same first names. So I'm like, which room am I in? She's like, X room. And then she's like, oh, wait, after I'd already set up, you're in the other room. So I literally had to tear down, run everything over to the other venue. And that took me about 40 minutes top to bottom. Partly already set up. Like my light trees were set up. I had to take all my cabling, take all my stands down, but I could walk the white trees in one piece. So that saved me like 10 minutes. But on average, it takes me a good 90 minutes to make set up everything, you know, that if, with my white setup anyway. 
because I've got to use cable ties on every step of the way or, you know, Velcro for in the totems, on the stands, everywhere I'm using them, I'm definitely using that. If I'm using my all black setup, 45 minutes to an hour max. With And that's with the black one with the front board light, like you saw with the first cake. Uh, if I, like tonight's setup was literally two speakers on stands and a micro, when one, my, my ceremonies kit, but with an extra speaker. So that was 30 minutes. And so, teardown is maybe 30 minutes to 45 minutes. If I have to rush it, because like I did a couple of Saturdays ago, where I literally had a teardown and then send my gear home with my driver and go take over for a DJ at the club who was bombing. I broke down in 20 minutes, had everything loaded out from the second floor and 35 and was at the club by 1140 that night. Oh, you got so my personal driver now, huh? Oh, <laughs> I can't see at night. If oh. there's no reason in God's green earth for me to even fathom trying to drive after dusk, ah. I can't see well enough. I thought you were just so busy that uh, the, the the places just stepped up and said, "Hey, we're gonna give you a driver now on on your uh, limo ride back home." <laughs> I wish I have to pay. You know, I pay a decent penny for the person or the two people that drive me around right now. And that's, that's fine. And part and parcel, there are, you know, back-to-back -back gigs. Like, I left Stevens Point Friday night, got home at 6.30 or 6 in the morning. I was up at 8, going through my notes again and prepping to go for my all-day wedding on Saturday. So, and that was the Kenyan uh, American wedding, which a lot of extra prep work had to go into. So, I got, you know, a 90-minute nap and was back at it, making sure I was good to go. Yeah, and again, something like that, you have a medical condition that you have to protect people. You don't want to hurt someone or, you know, put yourself yeah. in a long lawsuit or whatever, and that's very understandable. And uh, uh, Fred said, uh, see that uh, case, uh, the road, uh, the toad booth uh, came in handy. Uh, just it came did. over to a new venue and boom, done and over with. It so, really helped. That right there helped out a lot. And that, that's, oh, that's yeah. one of the things that it helps out. Um, and, you know, when you're setting things up and you're doing things and you have some time crunches uh, with things, uh, and, again, I, I know mo I know most of you guys are by yourselves or if you have a helper, you have someone helping you out, you know, which is always great. But yeah, when you are setting things up and you walk into a room – What's the first thing you look at in the room? You know, again, even though we've been there a billion times before, where, where's your eye go first when you walk into the room? I'm going to go with Jeff. Jeff, when you walk into a room, even if you've been there a billion times before, what's the first place your eyes go to in the room? Well, usually where I set up. Um, because, you know, even if you've been there before, some things change. Uh, there might be a piece of furniture or a table or a chair in the way or, you know, in misplaced. So it's got to be moved. Uh, and then I usually confirm, is this where you want me to set up um, with whoever is there? Or, you know, sometimes the person who hired you is not there or it might be an event or a coordinator or something um, so my, my eye goes directly to where I'm going to be putting my, uh, DJ table and my speakers. And, um, and then the second thing I look for would be obviously power, but that's, if you've been there a million times, you know where that's going to be. Um, and, and then just, you know, where everybody's going to be, but, but really, you know, it's, it's just looking at where you're going to physically place your gear. That's what I look for first. You're you're like me. You and I think the same. <laughs> and I always love when I go into a venue, and if I if I'm using the facility table, uh, someone, be it uh, bridesmaid, be it the coordinator, be it the florist, has their stuff on the table. And you walk in, and you're like, oh wow, that that's great. Now the table's covered with whatever it is, <laughs> and you're you're like, okay, give you a few minutes, let you start setting other things up that you don't need to put on a table, like speakers and so forth. But, uh, yeah, I, I do the same thing, scan there. So, Matt, when you walk into a room, what's the first thing you look at? Where's, the, where's your eyes go to first? Now, Jeff and I both say where we're setting up at, where, where's your eyes go to? Uh, yeah, where I'm setting up at in the layout. Um, kind of, yeah, the layout and, and how best to load in, too, um, as well as, like, power. So I check those three things um, and then, like, yeah, I mean that that that's pretty much it. I I try to 
I, I don't waste time. I just like, I get there. If I have an assistant, I'm not waiting for them. Like we're, I'm just going to just start getting into it when they show up, they can help. But uh, most of the people I, that do help are on time, but you know, most of the gigs I'm just by myself. So I look for power. I look for where I'm setting up and that's pretty much it. Okay. DJ Brentley, what do you do? What's the first place you look at when you walk into a room for a gig? Because of the celebrations on the river so much, and I have nowhere like, and most venues I'm at, I know exactly where I'm going, what to do, and I've already checked in with the venue that week. I'm looking at the head table and seating arrangement, uh, obviously for head count, because I mean, just to see how it's laid out. I'm looking at the color of the room to make sure that I've got the right info. I'm checking the lemonade, sorry. Uh, <laughs> so I can, you know, I'm, you know, seating arrangement so I know where to drop my up lights at the head table, where to put my other, you know, the lights I'm using for the head table because a lot of couples have been asking me for those tri-beam lights I have. They now, seem to be. Question if you're in the tri-beam lights. I actually got two questions for you. Uh, sure. Talk about your setups. Um, because this comes up a couple things here. The tri beam lights are they battery operated or are they plug in? That's the first question. They're battery up. Okay. And I can get twelve hours on a single color, and about seven to eight hours when I start mixing colors. That's pretty good. So I, I'm they're from Atticus <laughs> Professional Lighting, and thus far, all their gear has been pretty good to me. I'm not going to lie. I finally broke my front board light the other day, and it's my own fault for being in a rush. But I was loading in, tripped over something. It went flying out of my hand, and I lost one color on it, amber, on four of the lights. So at that point, I just bought a new one. Okay. And then the other thing you said in your one of your gig logs is the scrims you get, uh, the scrim company. And I was trying to search for that scrim company because I know people ask for scrims. What is that scrim company? And if you could do me a favor, send me a link to them. I found it on shop. Amazon. It was over on Amazon. And I just looked for, at first I was looking for the cheapest scrims. But these had a few extra features that I really liked. Um, reinforced bottom uh, where you put your uh, tripods. And you can fold them, and you can—they have a bag inside, so you can fold the scrim into the bag if you want. I tried it and just came out too wrinkled, so I leave. I might put them in a case, but they're not completely crumpled. And they have a Velcro strap, a, uh, and, and a hasp, so it can hook on something and come together. So I—that's okay. why I really liked them. I think they were like forty bucks a pop. If you could Maybe do me a favor, if you could, if you could send me yeah. a link for that, I'm going to put that in down in the description. So you guys got some homework. If you guys are looking for some stuff, that's that's the thing for both the lighting and the scrim company on Amazon. Um, and that way we can send some uh, some people who are looking for that, send them some business uh, because Scrim King is gone, and they were always I, I'm, I I always like Scrim King stuff. Unfortunately, they're gone. I still have a lot of their scrims and their scrim and their hooks and stuff. Uh, I wish they were still around because sometimes you know you need a scrim, a black scrim, or something like that. And you want something that works well versus some of the stuff is, you know, again, not the best quality. I like to have stuff that's nice quality. So, Dwayne, when you walk into a room and you, you're looking in the room, it doesn't matter if it's a millionth time or it's the first time, where where your eyes go first? What do you look at first? What's the first thing you look at? Uh, empty spot where I might set up at and then how close that is to the outlet and then the next empty spot where I think the dance floor might be. Okay. So, and when you set up, you know, your equipment and you're, you know, plugging everything in and stuff like that, you're setting your table, your booth, um, how are way you're doing stuff. When you look at how close you are to the dance floor, if there was tables in front of you between you and the dance floor, do you try to ask to move somewhere else or do you uh, try to get um, uh, the tables moved out of the way or that or are you just, you know, suffer through it and do it? Uh, it depends on it. It depends because this I did a 40th anniversary um, um celebration this Sunday, and there were like tables between me and the dance floor, so I just went went with it. So I didn't really um bother with it. But if it's like 
let's say a school dance or or if I have rapport with the with the um person, I might question why there's like a like a something in between me and the dance floor. So see if they have a, a specific reason before I ask them to see if they can move it. So we can be so there's a connection between me and the dance floor. Yeah, that's that's always the fun part when the people would like to put uh, tables between you and the dance floor. So cool thing, when you walk into a room or you walk into a facility or any place and you go to set up, doesn't matter if it's your uh, uh, favorite hot dog place or if it's uh, your uh, venue or if it's even a place you've been to a million times before, your family's backyard, what's the first thing you look at when you get to the area you're going to set up? Oof. Well, first I look where I'll be setting. Up. I'll look for an area to set up, and then and put all my stuff like take multiple trips out to the car and just put it anywhere, and then trying to figure out where I'm gonna be setting up and what to start with first. To, while I, when I put my table on the like when I set my table up. Okay. So yeah, it, it, you, you look where I guess everyone here looks where they're going to set up at, and then they kind of look at and judge the room and figure out the room and sound, power, putting lights up and so forth, and so on. What they're going to do with things. Got a question here, and uh, this is not for me. And 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 sometimes I can't really help. Like if I get provided a table, I can't help where I'm set it. Like where I'm set up. Oh yeah, like yeah. That, like that thirtieth birthday party, I was put in a corner. That's where my table was. It's right there in the corner. Sometimes yeah, not the most it. ideal place where they put you, unfortunately, and it happens. Yeah, I um, it, but it would be too much of a pain. Oh, yeah, very understandable. This is not for Matt because Matt doesn't like these, but uh, uh, <laughs> Fred is asking, uh, sorry to go off topic, but a quick question. Uh, love your opinion. I've got someone who wants to sell me the Maui 5s, not the battery-powered ones, so just the Maui 5s. For two hundred fifty dollars, does that seem like a good deal? Um, and it's two hundred fifty dollars. Two hundred fifty dollars for one speaker or for two? If it's two hundred fifty dollars, I'm sorry, what? Eight hundred dollars speaker. Yep. If it's two hundred fifty dollars for one, I would speaker, be wary. I would. I would listen to it first. Yes. As an eight hundred dollars speaker for two hundred fifty bucks, I would be wary of that. I would I would take a look at it and say I I say yes it's a good buy, but yeah I definitely would test it out and make sure it's working if it's one speaker two fifty, two speakers for five hundred okay, I had the Maui five go one hundreds and they were eleven hundred dollars each, plus the bag was another, I want to say two or three hundred dollars, uh for the bag because you got to buy two bags one for the subwoofer and one for the top and. Uh, Jeff, on your 28, you have buy bags for yours, or yours come with bags? No, I had to buy bags. I um, I bought the sub covers uh, that just basically you know fit mm -hmm. right over the subs. With just got the handle uh, holes uh, for the tops or the uh, the columns. Uh, I had two uh, bags from work that I wasn't using for anything else. They were. Um, uh they were tripod bags and they fit perfect um i can literally put two side by side uh in those bags and they fit just absolutely perfect so i lucked out saved myself a couple couple hundred bucks from having to buy the bags that uh, ld sells so at some yeah, point I, I may buy them you know so we'll see hey you know what not sound bad if your your, your regular gigs got them that that definitely helps out but the ld bags i i bought them I've had my Maui fives now for two years and I do smaller weddings with them. So basically 130 people or less with them. So smaller, smaller weddings. Cause they don't, they're not as powerful as JH, not a big booming speaker, but the eight inch woofer on there, they give some good bass. Uh, there are four drivers on top, five speakers total, eight inch woofer down below and then four drivers on top. I, the wedding I just did this past weekend, uh, the facility I deal with, 94 people. Um, it fills that room up real nicely. I never have problems with it. Uh, I've used them for as fill speakers for back for big weddings for like, you know, uh 300 person wedding. I've used that for, I use them for that. Uh, I find a lot of use for Maui fives. 
If you use them for a ceremony, it's great for a ceremony or for a cocktail hour. I've used them for, um, I used them uh, a couple of weeks, uh, four, a month ago, uh, the wedding I had way out West, um, way out West. Uh, they, I had a Maui five in each side, one in one side, one, the other side, there was two decks outside. So I had one on one side, one on, put my fingers on each side of the building. So I had each side running wirelessly and they were battery operated. So I had wireless connection to them out there. So they're working great. I like the Maui fives again, they're not the most powerful speaker. They're 121 SPL. Uh, they're decently loud. Uh, they have great sound. Um, I feel the LD system speakers are really, really good. Um, LD has found the magic sauce in their uh, their subs. Uh, I don't know if it's the uh, the drivers they're using or the the wood or just their technology of how to get that sound out. But every one of their speakers that I've ever heard, uh, it just it outperforms everything else in its class. The subs, the, the subs just outperform. The bass just is incredible. So I, I'm yeah. happy with my LDs. And even Matt, uh, Matt likes the LD system sub. He likes the, uh, and uh, like DJ Brentley. Sound yeah. great. Yeah, and DJ Brentley's got uh, the tops, the Icoa tops from uh, LD Systems that he loves. Oh yeah, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of the tops. Uh, I think like in full range, they don't, they don't sound that good in full range mode. Uh, with crossover and subs, they sound great. Uh, crystal clear highs and and good mids, but uh, when you try to put them in full range mode, they just, they sound kind of muddy. Uh, they don't have like a punch, and I think it's because it's got a, not a quick acting 15 like some of the rcfs have they're just more of a kind of a slow like when rcf says fast attack i get what they mean because with it when i had the 945 from rcf like you could hear that sub like kicking as hard as it could whereas the ld it seems like they focus more on like lower lower bass with how their subs are kind of configured but the top still they sound great they just uh i ran them in full range this weekend and i was just like ugh. <laughs> but I couldn't use the sub at this venue, so it kind of sucked. I had no other option. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, sure, I'm, I'm sure 95 percent of people thought the sound was fantastic because I've heard yeah, the Ico speakers and like the regular LD systems speakers. You know, again, I get the Maui fives. Jeff's got the 28s. Uh, you know, Brentley's got the uh, he's got the Icoa. Uh, Matt's got the subs. Uh, he he says that the sub, uh, the separate sub itself, it's actually a, a great buy. The the, the fit was a fifteen and eighteen are great buys if you're looking for a sub. Yeah. And they they sound really good. Uh, Hunter, you're going to say something. Oh yeah, and you look at me. I'm the different DJ who stood out from the crowd. I don't have any LD Systems uh, products. All I have are the JBL Eon Six Twelves as my main tops and my backup tops, the Ion Audio Topia Maxes. And again, no you have sub. you have you have good you have you have good speakers. They're good quality speakers. And again, I got I got I have JBL Eons. Um, I have the 15 versus the 12, so a little bigger woofer. But JBL has I've always been a big JBL fan. I switched over to line arrays. I like line arrays a little bit more because of how they sound. But I recently got their wireless Bluetooth headphones to use with my JBLs? iPhone. JBL yeah. again. JBL has always had good quality stuff. I've always liked their stuff. Now everyone loves it. There, look, he's got his JBL speaker there. Look, hey guys, I, I was just in uh, the Virgin Islands last week, and the house we were staying at had one of these. Um, I was shocked at how good it sounds. So I bought one as soon as I got home. This uh, is just your, your JBL. I think it's uh, what is it called? It's the uh, six something six i can't remember I'll, I'll find out here in a second what it is but this thing has got these, these um two drivers on both ends i mean it's just the the base is incredible it, so. it's a it's a nice little bluetooth speaker yeah so yeah i mean it's take it to the pool just play it around the house i mean it's uh it's the it is a great little jbl speaker yeah and that's that's the great thing about having stuff like that and that's also if you guys ever like i have a Harmon carden uh speaker i take for uh, for rehearsals, like if I get someone to ask you to help them with a rehearsal because Tracy does a coordination, I will take my Harmon Carden uh, speaker, which Harmon Carden owns JBL. Uh, that's the parent company of JBL. And the Harmon Carden Bluetooth speaker actually has in the back of it, it has a 
headphone jack, 3.5, one eighth jack. I plugged it into the output of the laptop and I can run um, music through there and do that. And we've done plenty oh, and, of yeah. um, rehearsals. Yeah, and the Mixstream Pro, you just connect the RCA to the Mixstream and then connect the 3.5 millimeter to the speaker. Why Why work Why work harder? Work, e no. work easier, work smarter. Especially and, uh, for how Hunter, yeah, Hunter works yeah. smarter. <laughs> <laughs> why not? So with that said, guys, it's come to the time to end the show. I want to thank you all for tuning in tonight. Thank you all for the questions in the comment section. If you're watching this on YouTube, you want to ask questions, ask down below. Comments, critiques, criticism, tomfoolery. We want to hear what you guys want to ask. So please ask questions. We're more than glad to answer those questions as quickly as possible. Just make sure you put it down there. Hit that like button and smash that thumbs up. And make sure you also follow the channel. And also tell another DJ about the DJ Roundtable. You know, uh, we want to have more people to watch this and uh, share some more information. But not only that, I want to thank all the guys on the panel tonight. Uh, thank you all for coming in. Uh, as always, it's greatly appreciated. And Hunter, thank you for stopping by. Hopefully he see you back here again. We'll see how your schedule works because so. your schedule is they always important. Yeah, yeah, they don't have any shifts on Tuesdays. No problem. If you can come in, you know, you know, you have a you have a home here, brother. Yeah. So you know, you're always welcome here. And then for that, I want to thank you guys all for tuning in. Make sure you uh, check out on Twitch, and if you haven't done so already on Twitch, make sure you follow us on Twitch. Other than that, guys, have a good night on Twitch. Peace! <laughs>